Uh, good evening, this is Pina La Pellis. Today is January 11th, and the time is 8.01 p.m. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, visible, with liberty and justice for all. Please allow me to confirm um, the presence of those town council members and any other staff or anticipated participants are present. So, members, when I call your name, respond in the affirmative. Dee Dee? Here. Jen? Here. Jason? Present. Uh, Terry? Terry was going to be remote, he told me. Terry, are you there? Uh, John. John, I'm Cormac Kelly here. Tony. Tony here. Sean. Sean here. Kevin, it will be remote. And myself, Enid, uh, we're here. Okay, so we'll just look for Terry, who said he would be here. Kevin on. Kevin is, is going to be on remote, I believe. Uh, he should be here, too. Uh, Council Member Reed won't be here this evening. Right. And John is taking his place doing L and A. Thank you, Mr. Former Keller. Okay. This meeting will be conducted as a hybrid meeting as follows. Town council members, designated staff, invited presenters, and members of the press may attend in person or remotely. Public access to this meeting will be limited to joining this meeting as follows. A limited number of in-person public attendees will be permitted based upon the reduced capacity of the meeting room pursuant to the governor's executive orders. Any member of the public wishing to attend in person meetings at MonroeCT.org at least 24 hours in advance. You will be notified as to whether or not space is available. All members of the public may attend remotely as follows. Via computer, tablet, or smartphone at the link or phone at 1-872-240-3311 and the access code. Please refer to further information for the end of this agenda regarding this remote electronic meeting. Okay. Um, consent calendar. Are there any objections to me passing the consent calendar as presented? Madam any Chair. Yep. Uh, no objection. Just want to note that the one item uh, at the end of our consent calendar did go through LNA and was moved unanimously to, to the council for its approval. Yeah, well, um, John for McKellar, I think is going to John is going to report McKellar is going to report on the LNA meeting. Okay, I'm hereby passing the consent calendar as presented. Communications. I hereby ask that communication items A through K be referenced in the minutes of the meeting. Uh, public participation. Anybody on phone or anything? Uh, I don't know. I will ask. see Steve Kirsch. If there's anyone on the uh, call that wishes to speak during the public participation section, please uh, remember to unmute yourself and indicate a desire to speak. I see Steve Kirsch there. Seeing none. Okay, thank you. Uh, appointments. Uh, we have one appointment. Mr. Rooney was going to do this if he if he were going to be on it remotely. I will just do it. Let me just find it. Okay. Appointments resolution 21-06 to consider and act upon a resolution approving the first selectman of Monica Condon, Republican, of 9 Stable Ridge Road to the Library Board of Trustees with a term ending November 30th, 2025 to fill a vacancy left by Donna Lynn Wales. I will make the motion. Do I hear a second? Jason Maurer, second. Thank you. Uh, discussion? Mr. Kellogg? Madam Chair. Mr. Kellogg, any discussion first? On, on the appointment? No, because you made it. Uh, my letter is before you. Um, Ms. Condon is a 27-year resident of Monroe. She's got experience in our schools, a long-term substitute for Jack Calla Middle School, uh, and she uh, is very interested in serving the Library Board of Trustees. Thank you. Any other discussion, Mr. Bauer? Madam Chair. 
Uh, just, I had the pleasure of working with uh, Ms. Condon on the Commission on Aging for a time, as well as seeing the many contributions she's made throughout different positions uh, in the town of Monroe. I think she will be a fantastic addition to the Library Board of Trustees. Okay, thank you very much. Any other discussion? So we're voting all in favor of this motion. Signify by aye. 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 Okay. Jason Mauer, aye. Yes. Aye. Yes, so uh, we have eight people tonight, so it passes eight to zero. Seven or eight? Uh, Madam Chair, we have seven. seven. I beg your pardon, yeah? Seven, Madam Chair. <laughs> seven. Seven. Well, Terry's not here. Oh, and Kevin, I'm sorry. I knew about, I should have known about them. Okay, action items. Um, looking at C, Town Council Committee on Legislative and Administrative Matters. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, this is John Cormac Kelly, Secretary for the LNA Subcommittee. This evening we did meet at 7 o'clock, uh, both remotely and in person, and we discussed items today, including the CDC Supplemental COVID-19 Vaccine Redistribution Agreement, which was already passed in the consent calendar, as Councilmember Mauer stated. Uh, we also discussed the Center for Policing Equity and Research Agreement, which is Resolution 2107, as well as the Second Amendment to the MOA between the Town of Monroe Board of Education for the Joint Finance Administration Resolution 21-08, as well as uh, an agreement uh, between the town, or a potential agreement between the town and Goldman, Gruder and Woods, which is a legal engagement agreement, Resolution 2109, as well as we discussed uh, the potential for a lease agreement with ARX Wireless. Um, that will not come before town council at this meeting. Uh, all the resolutions uh, passed unanimously uh, for this town council's consideration. Okay, thank you. Any, any questions, discussion on this? Okay, going on to... Um, oh, Madam Chair, yes. I thought you were going to go to the reach committee. Um, I was only gone, going on the ones that were people here. Oh, well, go ahead, no, please. Planning and zoning public works... I went to the uh, Park and Rec meeting and they um, elected their new membership and set their fees for the upcoming year, which we will be seeing. Okay. So, Going on to our first selection update. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so my update time will be uh, uh, another update on COVID. Um, so the, the case rates... Uh, no surprise, I'm sure, to everyone that they have increased uh, in the last uh, few weeks. We're averaging about just over eight and a half new cases per day. Uh, our total as of today's report since the start of the pandemic is uh, 815 cases. Uh, the uh, update on testing, um, which is uh, good news, we have been working very diligently with the state of Connecticut trying to get additional testing in Monroe. Um, in working with the state and one of their vendors, the Community Health Center, Inc. They will be providing uh, free drive-through testing every other Wednesday. Um, this will not, this will start next week, January 20th. Uh, it will be similar as to the last time drive-through uh, swab testing. Uh, slightly different process they have relative to uh, signing up. They'll have an online ability to sign up and put your information in system prior to actually being on site. Uh, so we'll be rolling out some information on that uh, in the near future. Uh, the big news I'm sure everyone is anxious to hear about is where we are with vaccination. So uh, the vaccination uh, process is you know very much uh, evolving um, rapidly. It changes uh, quite a bit. Uh, we don't uh, always get a lot of clear information from the state of Connecticut regarding how things are rolling out. And, uh, you know, and some of that to their, you know, defense is because they are constantly evaluating where the supply is, what the demand is, uh, and how, how and, you know, fast they can push stuff out. Um, we have, we are still in 
uh, technically the phase 1A of vaccination rollout. Um, and to be clear, you know, the phases and determining who gets vaccinated uh, and when and what phases, uh, that's determined by the state. That's not a town decision. Um, we have to make certain assertions that we're only vaccinating people that are eligible at this time. Um, we've done uh, a couple of clinics here in phase 1A uh, with a lot of assistance with, you know, everything ranging from CERT to the Medical Reserve Corps, our full emergency management team, uh, and we've given out over 100 vaccinations. Um, as you can imagine, we get relatively small allotments, but we did uh, get more vaccine this week. We're planning on another clinic uh, later this week uh, where we'll do um, up to 80 more individuals. Um, and as you might have gathered, you know, right here in council chambers uh, for these smaller clinics. Uh, we, again, we're still uh, talking about the phase 1A, which is basically healthcare workers and first responders. The, the system that we utilize requires uh, employers to certify and upload eligible staff to a centralized system. Uh, so that's done by human resources here for our people. But um, what's important to know is that the system allows anyone who's in the system to make an appointment at any point. So um, just as, just as we have had uh, our own personnel go to other locations here, they've gone to, for example, hospitals or other areas uh, to get vaccinated. Um, we have also vaccinated others uh, that are eligible because uh, once they're in the system and you have an available uh, clinic, anyone can see those available appointments. Uh, but it has been working pretty smoothly. Uh, the big news is uh, the start of phase 1B. So uh, the state had indicated that they were looking to move this forward a little bit faster. Uh, actually, uh, and, and it said last week that individuals over the age of 75 and certain uh, people that would be categorized as non-essential workers uh, would be included in phase 1B. Uh, just today, uh, we got preliminary information about the rollout of the phase, which we expect to begin next week. Uh, we've been told that those over the age of 75 will be the first target group in phase 1B. Uh, so we anticipate uh, that on Thursday, the state is going to be uh, rolling out a direct enrollment pro uh, process, which will be on a state website, uh, also supported by a two-on-one phone-based system for those that not uh, would not want to use a website or, or may not have that uh, capability. Um, we, were, we will be meeting with our internal team to make sure we're supporting that uh, as much as necessary, uh, but we're still waiting for more information on the state system. Uh, again, it was just announced today. Uh, we know that certain healthcare systems are going to be contacting their patients directly and encouraging them to uh, enroll and possibly trying to assist them uh, with things like appointments. We expect that people will be able to get vaccinated at a variety of locations. Um, the existing vaccinators, such as the healthcare systems, uh, we will certainly continue to do the limited number of, uh, you know, as many appointments as we can do based upon the vaccine that we have or that we're given. Uh, and we meet on a regular basis to try and uh, make sure that we can push out as much as we can to our, our residents. We will, we will be doing that. Uh, so more information will come out very soon. Uh, again, I think Thursday is going to be a big, uh, a big day relative to getting people aware of that website and how to get themselves uh, pre-registered so that once appointments are ready, which could be as early as uh, a week or so, um, they will be able to do so. And then, uh, as far as the other, you know, who else has been included in the frontline essential workers? It's an extremely broad group based on different sectors. Um, we do know that it does include education. So I know that's a big question. Um, it, uh, it will certainly uh, include, again, it's a very broad, uh, broad range. They don't have a final listing available, but uh, there's things such as grocery, workers, restaurant workers, uh, delivery personnel, public transit, etc. So uh, more to come. What they haven't released is what priority groups will be allowed to, to do. Uh, again, 
those that are in certain uh, sectors, again, we expect we'll continue to rely upon the employers to upload qualified employees under their system, and that will be the process. Um, once we get past all of the phase 1B groups, uh, the future phases is uh, where it's basically up to anyone. Uh, that we have absolutely no information on at this point, other than they're saying, it, you know, we'd start by the summer. Um, but that's a little bit too far out. I think they need to get, we need to get past this much larger 1B group to see um, where we are in terms of supply and demand. So more information to follow. Uh, I did send out some information to the community. I appreciate everyone sharing. There's multiple avenues by which we send out information ranging from email, Facebook, uh, Code Red, uh, local media, um, and uh, of course our town's COVID uh, website, uh, web page I should say. And uh, that's how we will continue to get information out to the community as to um, how these vaccination phases roll out. Uh, other than that, the other only other two things I want to note was that uh, uh, Mr. Kabza, who's here, had announced that uh, public schools will start back in a hybrid model uh, that was that started today. Uh, and the other information that I just thought was um, would be uh, something that might be of interest is that the state was reporting that um, hospital and ICU capacities uh, remain within safe limits, which I think is an important. Uh, piece to keep in mind, even as cases are going up, we've been saying throughout this that uh, if cases uh, have uh, been the hospitals has not been, uh, you know, in, impacted in a way that would make it unsafe. Um, on the back side, I did um, give you a report that came out from the state uh, showing the first week of January and the current occupancy uh, of each hospital. Uh, so you will see statewide 78% occupied um, inpatient and 61% occupied in ICU. And uh, I will put the, certainly this uh, update, which I just finished this year. I will put this up in the uh, council packet as well so that everyone has it online as well as the public. Uh, but you know, the point is the capacity is there, and you have to remember that the capacity is there even with hospitals continuing to do their uh, normal, uh, you know, routine operations. Uh, back when capacity was um, of concern, uh, there was really nothing going on other than COVID cases, and ICs were filled with nothing but COVID, and now it's, you know, all your, all your typical uh, patients that you would expect uh, that would require an ICU bed as well as those. So that's uh, that's my update for this evening. So I, have, I have a question. So if, if Thursday, I think I understand what you're saying. If Thursday morning I went on WW Monroe C. Pond, would have a thing saying you can sign up, just pretending at CVS, Monroe, et cetera? Uh, what, what I anticipate is that um, there will be a state website, a state web page that will allow you to register uh, and then hopefully uh, either be notified of when you can make an appointment or possibly make an appointment. Um, so when we'll that will be a state run system. Uh, we will certainly link to it and we will push it out there. So you, yes, you will be able to get to it from our town page, absolutely. Um, again, we don't have a whole lot of specifics yet. I will say that the state has been very clear that they will not, or we will not be emulating some of the states where it's just first come, first serve, and people are forced to camp out and have long waiting lines. Everything we're told, as of today, we're told that everything will be by the state. So they're also planning on um, throughout the state, although I do not have locations for our area yet, but they are planning on holding mass vaccination uh, efforts at large venues such as um, Rensselaer Field, uh, the Civic Center, um, and other large locations. So you could imagine perhaps some larger venues in our area that may be tapped for that. But again, we have not been informed of any as of yet. We've been told that we're working on half the tomorrow that we're bringing online in the coming weeks. So um, again, so all of that plus our healthcare systems in the mix plus. Um, 
the existing, you know, all the local health departments that have chosen to offer uh, vaccinations as well, of which, as you know, we are one of. Uh, but obviously, our uh, our capacity is going to be, uh, you know, we're not running through, right? It's a lot more, a lot more space, a lot more capacity. So, thank you. You're too young, anyway. Yeah. I'll lie and say I'm older. Okay. Um. So. And no other questions or any discussion from Mr. Kellogg? Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, we have no unfinished business. So going on to new business, A, on donations, uh, Mr. O'Rourke? I move that we accept the following uh, donations. Uh, I, $2,000 from the uh, Julie Butler for Community and Social Services. Uh, I, I, $1,500 from uh, John and Cheryl Rajbolt for the food pantry. Uh, I, I, I. Um, one thousand nine hundred and twelve dollars from Washington Lodge number nineteen for the food pantry. Okay, do I hear a uh, second? John Cornell is second. Thank you. Uh, discussion. Madam Chair, I just want to again reemphasize our our. Oh God, can you shut up? You know, the, if you if you look at the total donations to the food pantry and social services this past uh, that we're accepting at this meeting. Um, it's over $13,000, and uh, these are significant components of that, and uh, we certainly extend our gratitude to everyone, and especially uh, these large donors. Okay, thank you. Uh, any more discussion? Otherwise, if we vote, all in favor? Aye. aye. Jason Maurer, aye. It passes 7 to 0. Going on to be resolution 21-07. To consider and act upon a resolution regarding Center for Policing Equity Search Agreement. I move to accept the following resolution titled Resolution Regarding Center for Policing Equity Research Agreement, Resolution Number 21 07, resolve that Kenneth M. Kellogg, first selectman of the town of Monroe, and John Salvador, Chief of Police, are authorized to execute and deliver on behalf of the town of Monroe the research agreement and any associated documents buying between. Police and Equity, Inc. for data collection and information sharing. Okay, uh, I hear a second. John Formichel is second. Okay, thank you. Uh, discussion, Mr. Kellogg? Thank you, Madam Chair. So as my uh, memo outlined uh, several years ago, the town agreed to participate in this uh, independent study. It was with Day College, uh, University of New York. Uh, that data collection effort has now migrated to, uh, it's, I believe it's the same people, but it's uh, under Policing Equity, Inc. Uh, Chief Salvatore and I have discussed this and he's indicated that you know, we want to continue uh, in this endeavor at this time. Uh, again, the goal of the study is to improve policing practices and community uh, relations. Um, and uh, it has been reviewed by the town attorney uh, with, I believe, some, some minor uh, negotiation as well. His letter of opinion is attached, and uh, we ask that you move this forward. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, this was discussed at uh, LNA and passed with the unanimous consent. Okay. Going on to a vote. All in favor of this? Aye. Okay. okay. Jason Maurer, aye. Dan aye. Aguilar, aye. aye. Yeah, cool. So this passes seven to zero. C, resolution 21-08, to consider and act upon a resolution regarding second amendment to MOA, application for the Joint Finance Administration. Mr. Rook. I move that we, we accept the following resolution titled resolution regarding second amendment to MOA between BOE for the Joint Finance Administration. Resolution number 21-08, resolved that Kenneth M. Kellogg, first selectman of the town of Monroe, is authorized to execute and deliver on behalf of the town of Monroe the Second Amendment Memorandum of Agreement. Associated documents buying between the Monroe Board of Education for the Joint Finance Administration. Okay, a second. John Foreman Kellogg is second. Okay, uh, discussion, Mr. Kellogg? Thank you. So um, again, you're well aware that uh, we entered into a MOA with the Board of Ed in regards to providing administrative support while we uh, in, uh, evaluated the concept of a joint finance administration. 
uh, that was extended uh, in a First Amendment through January 15th. Uh, so I have had, uh, we've had several meetings, uh, Mr. Kobza, Mr. Bonofsky, uh, and I, along with uh, our HR director, both uh, the prior interim director, and Craig Hirsch, our current director, uh, and our uh, collective opinion after going through the process is that we, uh, we feel the joint function is, is feasible and it's beneficial to both parties. Uh, we understand it's uh, and fully uh, intend to bring uh, more details to both uh, this body as well as the Board of Ed uh, in terms of uh, the specifics and how we think this would roll out. Um, and uh, obviously we are uh, we're planning to move forward, I guess, is the, is the end game. But uh, again, we understand it's subject to approval of both uh, bodies. Uh, we look we look to implement this uh, for July 1st of, uh, of 21. Uh, so in the effort to just finalize a plan for your consideration as well as the board's consideration, uh, which we want to do uh, sooner rather than later, this is not something we're anticipating will take us much longer to get to a point where we will be able to come to both, both bodies with more specifics regarding uh, how this would look how the numbers uh, look, um, you know, and some of the operational considerations. Uh, so we will be looking to do that in short order. Uh, but in the interim, uh, while we do that, um, we would like to, uh, we're proposing an extension of the MOA uh, through the end of this fiscal year. And um, I asked uh, Mr. Kobza and Mr. Kodofsky to join us as well and certainly uh, entertain any questions you may have or, or comments or questions for them. I do want to know, um, I know it was circulated earlier today uh, to council via email uh, and has also been updated in the online packets, but the MOA uh, before you this evening is slightly uh, changed from the original just to remove the acting, uh, the word acting from Mr. Cobbs's title for obvious reasons. and. Apologize for the oversight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Any other discussion? Uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, this matter came before LNA and all our members agreed that the extension was appropriate uh, at this time and we look forward to reviewing the final agreement between the Board of Education uh, and the town. Okay, any other discussion? Mrs. Uh, Thank you. Um, before I ask my question, I just want to express my concern about the situation in Washington and uh, certainly hoping for a peaceful transition, as I'm sure we all. Um, the, uh, I understand some of these questions have been raised in LNA, but I would like to ask them again just to make sure that they get into the public record and, and my thoughts also. Um, first of all, are, do, are we aware of there, are there any other towns that are doing this? Yes. Right. There are? Can you tell me who they are? Uh, Mr. Bonofsky has... Uh, Madison is one. Madison. Madison? Madison and Wilton. Okay. And, they, okay. and they have had conversations with them. And, and you have had... Conversations? I've, I've, uh, I've spoken with the uh, director of finance of Madison. Okay, great. That's good. Um, is it, was there any concern about that this, particularly in LNA, that this agreement blurs the line at all between Mr. Bonofsky's duties to the town and to the Board of Ed? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear the first part of your question. I said, was there any concern that this position blurs the line, if you will. I can't think of a better way. Blurs the line? Well, uh, my thought is, and this may have been discussed in LNA, and if it is, you know, certainly enlighten the uh, full council that, you know, Mr. Bonofsky would be an employee of the town of Monroe and also the Board of Education. And the board, as, as we well know, since we can't look at their budget, the Board of Education is autonomous. They don't, we, we don't have any say over that. So now we have an individual that is, 
having a say over the budgets input into the budgets of both places. I mean, where, do, where does the loyalty lie? And let me go back and say, this is not specific to Mr. Banoski. It's the position I'm talking about. Well, I, I can, I certainly don't want to speak for, for Joe or, or Ron or anything. <laughs> my perspective, um, you know, I would certainly hope that the loyalty for all employees, whether employed by the municipal side or the Board of Ed side, the loyalty is to this town and its residents and citizens and taxpayers. So I think um, I think that there should not, you know, there shouldn't be, there shouldn't be a line. We should be all coordinating and communicating together. Um, I think that, uh, you know, certainly there is, um, you know, there are, yeah, I, to your point, there are certain things where uh, the, the director of finance is going to be involved in more details, but the director of finance does not have any authority to make any budget transfers on either side of the on either side of the house, so to speak. It it falls upon either the board of ed, the board of finance, or the town council. So it's not like this position could uh, do anything other than make certainly recommendations. So, um, but. I think well, as that you know, the, the the coordination and communication and consistency of policy and procedure, I think, are something that we, at least, in my conversations with with Ron and Joe, I think we feel are are um, you know are significant and uh, very much uh, welcome. The um, well, as director of finance for the town. Mr. Vanoski signs off on warrants, right? Would he be doing that on the Board of Ed side also? He does it already, as do I, required to. Right, and okay. is there an additional, is an additional signing on that? Or is it just the two of you? Um, all warrants are signed off by the Director of Finance, the Town Treasurer, and the Select. Okay. Thank and you. board of veterans were also signed off by the superintendent. Right. Right. So that, so currently or proposed would be you signing off on both of those sides, if that's, you were. That's being done now. Right now. Okay. I mean, even before all this was put into place, all warrants, all board of ed warrants were signed off by those four individuals. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, is there any possibility, just so that we have it in writing, so to speak, that, that we can get a, a legal opinion citing other counties or you know other um, cities, or states, not states, other towns that do this? And the uh, I would sure I'd be happy to uh, pursue a legal opinion. Okay, sure. I appreciate that. Sure. Okay, so we, any other discussion? So we need a vote on this. All in favor of this motion? Madam Chair, Madam Chair. Yes, yes Jason, Mr. Mauer. Uh, before we move on to a vote, Jason Mauer, um, I uh, believe that as of right now, uh, I am ready to approve the extension of the MOA. I do have one request of uh, our superintendent, our selectman, and our finance director. And while I, from the, uh, what's been put forward here, I don't think this will be necessary because of the fact that it's it, it's been said that we expect to have this done before the uh, start of the new fiscal year. But if there is a need for another extension uh, for any reason, I would just ask that uh, the, three of you, uh, as you did come to this meeting, come to that meeting with whatever plan you have put forward, at, you have put together at that time with some more details just to show the pro, the uh, how things have uh, progressed over the six months. Okay, thank you, Mr. Maurer. That's, that's fair, and I, I think our intention is to provide those uh, details for a, for a decision prior to that anyway, so, but. Understood. Thank you very okay. much. Um, this is Martin. Yeah, I have one additional question. If I may ask Mr. Cobbs a question. Sure. Um, Mr. Cobbs, simultaneously as this is happening, the, the
the research and the work into forming this new, um, you know, what we're talking about here. Has there been given any consideration to reinstituting the search for um, a new finance person on the board of EdSign? Uh, we've, we've talked about it as part of the policy. I mean, you know, one of the trickiest things was you know, trying to do this over the past year, um, you know, circumstances being what they were, have, uh, have made this whole process a lot slower. We really wanted to try to see if we could combine services to between the town of Oregon and the and probably more importantly, you know, uh, the first one we like said uh, to improve uh, communication and transparency between the two. I mean, I, I imagine some of you saw some of the information, some of the uh, some of the news that just came out recently on one of our neighboring towns and some of the issues they had. And I think a lot of that was, you know, I don't know if it was, you know, uh, malintent there, but it was clearly, um, I think, a lack of communication. Uh, this past year has been incredibly challenging, but I think, you know, if there is a silver lining in all this, we have, I mean, I, I have not think like that the communication by having, you know, the Spinozzi position. Uh, has been really helpful. It's been helpful with me. I hope it's been helpful. Oh, uh, communication has been uh, has been really helpful. So, you know, we have uh, back to your question. Um, you know, we've approached this with the idea of, of looking for uh, looking for the efficiency of having um, you know, the joint department. So, you know, quite honestly, we haven't looked at. We, we know what the other uh, you know we know what the other structure looks like, and you know, in this past year. At this point, this is what we're going to pursue this to try to you know, keep those efficiencies really high. When when you refer to efficiency, are you talking about financial? I think there's there's financial efficiencies. I think um, you know not just in, in, you know that's much just in the uh, in the position, but also in the streamlining of services. I, I think one of the easiest examples I can give was. Um, you know, we had we, we repaved the driveway at the high school. I knew you were going to say the driveway. Yeah. Yes, it's a good example. Yeah. We repaved the driveway at, at the high school, and we ran into a problem with the drainage. And I, I think what would have happened, you know, I, quite honestly, what would have happened in the past was we would have gone out to a third party, you know, vendor, and they would demand they would charge us, you know, probably significantly higher than what we paid to have some of that drainage work done. Um, the, the, the nice piece about you know having Mr. Monosky there was. He called the, uh, the DPW. They came out there. They did the work for, you know, I think, a pretty significant savings. We were able to get the work done. I think that's the kind of relationship we want to see um, you know, develop moving forward. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. So, all in favor of this motion? Aye. Okay. Jason Maurer, aye. Ben Aguilar, aye. Passes 7 to 0. Resolution 21-09, to consider and act upon a resolution regarding Goldman, Gruda, and Woods, LLC, legal engagement agreement for additional special counsel. Mr. O'Rourke? I move to accept the following resolution, uh, titled Resolution Regarding Goldman, Gruda, and Woods, LLC, legal engagement agreement. Uh, resolution number 21-09, resolve that Kenneth M. Cal First selectman of the town of Monroe is authorized to execute and deliver on behalf of the town of Monroe the legal engagement agreement and any associated documents by and between Goldman, Gruder, and Woods, LLC, as additional special counsel. Okay, you want to hear a second? Town of Port is second. Thank you. Uh, discussion, Mr. Kellogg? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so, as uh, indicated in my cover memo, uh, Town Attorney Lido has uh, recommended that we uh, add Goldman, Gruder, and Woods as additional special counsel availability. Um, I defer to him to uh, discuss this uh, further, but uh, suffice to say, is to you know, further add um, additional uh, resources available to the town uh, at the same uh, uh, favorable rates that we have uh, for um, most of our general counsel matters. So I believe Attorney Lido is on the call. I am. Thank you, uh, Mr. First Selectman. Um, uh, thank you, uh, members of council, for uh, considering this. And I, I didn't want uh, this to be on anything but the uh, full agenda, so we can have an uh, an open discussion about it. But uh, I, I think uh, our first selectman uh, put it well. 
um, our managing partner has agreed to um, uh, agreed to the uh, provide legal services through the resources and attorneys that we have in our office should the need arise at the same rate, uh, $150 an hour that uh, other counsel has been engaged, including uh, myself as town attorney, uh, as well as attorney Marino's office. Um, we were able to identify two attorneys in the office specifically one uh attorney matthew woods who's been the town attorney in the city of milford um through uh um uh for 30 years uh through um uh, various different uh mayors there and uh attorney john rebus who uh has a specific uh, uh knowledge in the uh, planning zoning matters and other matters and uh the way the courts have been during COVID the last year, um, there haven't been very many opportunities um, to engage outside counsel for litigation matters, um, uh, other special assignments, and um, scheduling conflicts or commitments that may be uh, beyond the scope of the availability of just having a single attorney um, handle those matters. So this provides us with additional resources and a seamless uh, opportunity to um, have the town's matters uh, covered uh, without having to um, re-vet and re-explain the issues to third parties that would be, uh, most would be unwilling, as most of us have been on council for a long period of time, unwilling to work for uh, the rate that the town has been accustomed to paying. So rather than uh, in an uh, in emergency or an abundance of caution having to present uh, this retainer to the council in a special meeting, should the need arise, uh, or in a future meeting, I thought it would be appropriate to have that authority uh, granted now. Okay, any other discussion? Mrs. Martin? Um, well, I actually would defer to, to Jonathan because I think he has l &E issue. Go ahead. Oh, sure, sure. Um, this was discussed in l and um, and the members asked various questions, but this uh, agreement was passed in LNA unanimously uh, to be brought forward before the council. Hey, thank you. Mrs. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Furniture. Uh, Mr. Lito, can you hear me? It's Dee Dee Martin. I can, Ms. Martin. Okay. Um, I just, can we have the record reflect that this, this firm is the firm that you work with? Is that, it is, is that it correct? Is. Okay, it thank is. you. Um, is it, could I just, is it appropriate for me to ask, is there any reason at this point I think we have a need for additional counsel? Is there something coming up that's, that we don't know about or something? Uh, thank you, Ms. Martin. That's a good question. Uh, it was a question that was asked in LNA and I did address it. There, I, there is no specific matter or specific need that I've identified where, um, we would need to engage any other members of my firm or any other firm for that matter. Um, as you know, we recently brought attorney Rosemark before council for his subject matter expertise. Um, it, specifically, um, the thought arose based upon the infrequency that council meets with, although it feels frequent when you're on council, um, when you're not on council, uh, it does feel like um, based upon our charter that we do need uh, uh, to access resources quickly for certain matters at times. And specifically, as I mentioned, the courts are becoming um, more prevalent with their scheduling um, because of the remote nature of all of the hearings um, and proceedings. Um, they are less flexible with uh, conflicts, time conflicts, and unavailability conflicts. Um, so I'm having, we're having issues as it is with scheduling already because the courts are um, you know, deeming um, you to uh, be available um, on a more frequent basis based upon the electronic nature of the interaction, the court interactions, the court hearings. Um, so we, we do have a number of, uh, for instance, tax appeals that are still pending that are uh, being defended on behalf of the town. Um, uh, there are other various issues uh, that may come up that would need the uh, assistance of special counsel, mostly on the planning and zoning side of things, uh, from the litigation standpoint, uh, enforcement matters, things of that nature. So, the, again, it was in an abundance of caution that I suggest this is the first selectman so that there would be an easy, seamless opportunity without having to go out, 
find, identify, formally engage, and then have it outside counsel approved. And most importantly, at the rate that has been bargained for, I, I think it's an excellent opportunity. Um, the, the firm I work for has agreed, the managing partners agreed to uh, offer, uh, like I said, attorney, attorney Woods, uh, is, is specifically someone who's had 30 years of experience as a municipal attorney, should we need it. And I think it's a, an excellent, uh, um, excellent bit of additional uh, firepower, for lack of a better way to put it, that we have in our uh, back pocket should the, should the need arise. All right. Thank you, Mr. Leader. I appreciate that. Any other discussion? Madam Chair? Yes. Mr. Mauer? Uh, thank you very much, Jason Mauer. I want to thank Attorney Lito for bringing this uh, forward uh, along with Selectman Kellogg. Uh, as mentioned, uh, I did ask a few questions in LA, and just for the sake of putting uh, my rationale onto the record, I want to uh, disclose some of those details, some of which have already been disclosed. One of which is the extremely favorable rate uh, that we would be receiving uh, at the same rate as uh, one of our other outside counsel, as well as uh, Attorney Lito as town attorney. Uh, in addition, uh, as Attorney Lito previously mentioned, the fact that we have seen uh, the courts opening up and the docket starting to really flow in uh, all of cases including any tax appeal cases or anything of the sort that would be the town would be involved in maybe coming up at a rapid pace that may uh, overflow the calendars of both our already uh, retained councils uh, as well as our town attorney um, having somebody there would be extremely helpful in addition uh, uh, one thing that Attorney Vito mentioned in LNA, which I thought was a very good point, uh, was if uh, Attorney Vito were ever unable to serve in his capacity as town attorney for any reason, having a firm with attorneys who are very familiar with his record keeping and file keeping uh, already at the ready and at the same rate to be able to bring on on a moment's notice. And finally, the fact that there is no upfront retainer, meaning that we are not paying anything out of pocket just to bring on this retainer agreement. It is purely on an as needed basis. Uh, I would put my support behind this. Okay, thank you. Discussion? All in favor? Jason Mauer, aye. Jennifer Aguilar, aye. So this motion passes seven to zero. Um, that's all the business for tonight. So we're adjourning at we have second public participation. Madam Chairman, you need second participation. Oh, I'm sorry, because we got all involved in the thing. Okay, so second by John for McKellar. No, no the no, second by former. No, we need sorry, we need a second we public need second participation. Second public participation. Yeah, so we need to ask to make sure. No, that's the only thing we have left. Okay, I, I knew it was there, but there was nobody in, in the audience. No, and, Madam Chair. Yes. I would like I would like to um, speak for second participation. Yeah. Public participation. Okay. Go ahead. As a member of the public. Jennifer Aguilar, 32 Surrey Lane. Um, sorry, I actually wanted to speak to this after uh, Mr. Kellogg's comments, but um, I wanted to uh, publicly give out the Monroe Playground Foundation um, huge credit and to ask Mr. Kellogg if it's possible. I know that it's budget time and we're working on the budget. I know it's gonna be a tough year, but if you would consider um, putting any amount in the budget for the Monroe Playground Foundation to go towards the playground. I believe they are, I don't have their numbers, but I believe after four years, they are at three, uh, one third per one third of the total four hundred thousand dollars that they need. I just don't see them getting their money without us, without the town helping, without taxpayer money. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, Could we make a discussion of that. That's just our comment. Done. Okay. All in favor of a. We're adjourning at uh, 9.
Madam, Madam Chair, before we move on, we simply need to ask if there's uh, any other public participation or any other All callers right. who wish to participate. Also, why don't you just talk about you remember the council? Why don't you just come forward and say what you want to? Go ahead, Jason. Uh, I, I don't. I was saying that that is a procedural thing that we have to do before we can move to adjourn. Okay. Any other public participation? All righty. Oh, seeing none. I'm adjourning this meeting at uh, 8.54.